Good morning. It's turned out nice again. Mother, how's it going, guys? You're all right. It's actually eight forty a.m. here on the east coast of Murica. Uh, what what time does that make it back home then? So if it was nine, it'd be two. It's one forty. One forty p.m. in the afternoon in England. Yeah, rural Britannia and all that. You all right? Yeah, my eyes are a bit sore. I do apologise. I'm not sleeping very well, uh, but I have got a coffee to try and wake myself up a little bit. And it's a nice one at that. Um, so yeah, I watched the match yesterday. And uh, thanks to those of you that took the time to comment on the uh, on the video. Um, it kicked off at 9 a.m. Uh, so I was <laughs> around about this time yesterday, actually. Uh, and I actually really enjoyed watching the football at 9 a.m. I thought it was great. Um, I'd like that on a, on a permanent basis, I think. Get the game out of the way, and then that you know you got the rest of your day to yourself. So um, rather than sat around waiting for the game, is what I mean. That's what it feels like back home, especially on an evening game. Uh, I know, like say the the evening games that kick off at eight o'clock in Spain, that's nine o'clock. I know it's only an hour's difference, but by the time it's finished and the analysis and everything, it makes a big difference. Uh, I've also got my uh, my mega pint T-shirt on now. Normally. You know, you might have a mega pint when you're watching the football, but you can't have a mega pint at nine. Well, I don't know. You can't. I guess some people will have a pint at nine in the morning. So I hope you're all okay. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not churning out as many videos as usual. I'm trying to. Um, there just hasn't been a lot really to discuss. Um, but one thing I did want to discuss with you uh, are these quotes from, let me find his name, um, Mario Bittencourt. I bet, I bet you've never heard of him, have you? Or you might have read him, but forgot who he is. Uh, he's the Fluminense president. And he's been talking about Liverpool Football Club and a player that Liverpool Football Club are trying to sign. And it's unusual for, uh, you know, a club president to, to make a claim that's not true. Do you know what I mean? Like, journalists are going to spout shite. You know, people like me might spout shite, you might spout shite, but if you're a president of a of a football, well, hang on, I'm going to stop things, I'm going to stop it right there. I don't intentionally ever uh, spout shite, but some people might think it's a lot of shite. Um, if, if you're a president of a, of a football club, uh, you know, you, you know, you're responsible for what you say, is what I'm trying to say. And... Uh, he, you know, he's. If you're Liverpool, you're not going to appreciate him uh, saying this. But anyway, he said. Now this is about. Let me. I've got that many different tabs open on my uh, my window, uh, my laptop here. Uh, this is about Fluminense midfielder Andre Trindade, right? Um, and he is basically confirming that Liverpool um, have approached him or did approach him regarding the player's availability. And uh, he said his exact quote. So these are important, I think. Liverpool's chief executive, which, who is Billy Hogan, uh, contacted me directly. I replied to him, my friend, I don't sell players now and I don't deliver them now. If you want to buy now and only get the player in January, we can start talking. Or if you want to wait until December, we can talk in December. So... I want to go through this, the, the headline that I've seen today, and there was a few the other day about these quotes, so they've been all over in different publications. Uh, the one in the Express, which isn't, you know, like you should never listen to the to the Express, but they're using quotes. The quotes, it doesn't matter when the quotes appear on a credible website or um, a credible publication or not so credible publication. The Express is terrible um, online, I think, for uh, for football news. But the headline, which is quite catchy, uh, is Liverpool just one game away from £34 million transfer wish, we wish, uh, becoming a reality in January. Now, there are loads of various articles about this spreading back, you know, over the weekend, uh, going back over the weekend. The Mirror ran it. Um, uh, let's have a look. The Mirror ran it. The, uh, did the Athletic run it? Don't think so. doesn't matter, but there's, there's tons of... Um, Websites that have picked up on these quotes, so we don't have to worry that it's the Express. I'm not going to read the mirror one. I want to read the one from from the Express actually, and it says Liverpool were reportedly unable to get a deal done with Fluminense for Andre in the summer due to their involvement in the Copa Libertadores. 
Uh, Liverpool target Andre is now just one game away from helping Fluminense and their long, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, and their long wait for the club's first Copa Libertadores title after they defeated Internacional last week. The Brazilian midfielder emerged as a top target for Liverpool in the summer following the exits of Fabinho and Jordan Henderson. Are you missing neither of those players? Fabinho, yeah. Uh, but reports in Brazil claim Fluminense were unwilling to listen to any offers while they were still competing uh, in the Copa Liber, La, Liber, Liber in, in the Cup. Um, their participation in the competition went on beyond the summer transfer deadline, forcing Liverpool to look elsewhere. Jurgen Klopp ended up bringing in Wataru Endo and Ryan Ravenberg, but it's been suggested that Liverpool still retain an interest in Andrea. Key words in this article are, so far are reportedly and suggested. They're like words that a journalist can use to say, hey, I wasn't making those claims, you know. Reportedly means somebody else said it. It's been suggested. It doesn't mean it's true, but it's been suggested. These are key words uh, that you should pay attention to. Uh, where are we? <clears throat> it's been suggested that Liverpool still retain an interest. The 22-year-old is now just one game away from a fairy tale ending to his career with Fluminense. The Brazilian outfit recorded a dramatic late win over Internacional in the second leg of their semi-final to reach the Copa, uh, to reach the cup final, for only the second time in the club's history. The only other time uh, they made the final was back in 2008 when Thiago Silva was lining up for the Brazilian side. Uh, they ended up losing to LDU Quito on that occasion, with the final played over two legs. The format changed to a single match in 2019, with the Brazilian team winning every time. And Andre's team may have the advantage in this year's final against Argentina side Boca Juniors. Uh, the 2023 Cup final uh, will be played in Brazil's iconic Marcana Stadium in Rio de Janeiro, uh, where Fluminense are also based. The match will take place next month, okay? Uh, next month, with the season in Brazil ending in December. And Fluminense president Mario Bittencourt has already admitted that they will be more willing to hold talks with Liverpool over a move for Andre uh, in the January uh, transfer window. And again, just those quotes, Liverpool chief executive, Liverpool's chief executive contacted me directly. I replied to him, my friend, I don't sell players now and I don't deliver them now. If you want to buy now and only get the player in January, we can start talking. Or if you wait until December, we can talk in December. So I don't know if, I, I remember this uh, this speculation in the summer, actually. Um, I don't know if you guys do. Let's have a look. Um, I just want to search this. Excuse me. Um, I'm watching, uh, I've just got it still paused, actually. I'm catching up on last night's launch of Big Brother. Have you ever watched that? I used to like Big Brother years ago when it first came out. You know, the first couple of seasons were brilliant. Uh, they just got fucking stupid, didn't it? And it's been so long since I've seen it. And um, I saw on social media last night that it was back. Uh, so I thought, ooh, I'll have a look at that. So when I finish this video, I'm going to be a right saddo uh, and watch the end of it. Uh, well, watch the rest of it. Uh, it's, it's it's very predictable so far with the housemates. That's all I'm going to say. Um, number four was all right. Should be too young for me though she she wouldn't know how to do Yorkshire puddings or use a washing machine do you know what I mean fellas can't be doing with that can we all right okay so Andre defensive midfield um I wanted to see who his agents were actually I don't think that's going to be um of any interest to us to be honest with you when we're linked with players and I always try to you know find out who the agent is or the agency to see if we've got an outstanding relationship with that agency and not just a good working relationship because sometimes you know there might be agents that the club cannot stand and you just think they're going to do business with them uh, and also some obviously you can deal with an agency uh, with existing Liverpool players or former Liverpool players just to see if there's ever been any uh, contact you know previously and to be honest with you sometimes Liverpool it's Sometimes Liverpool are linked with a number of players at the same agency, and I always find that rather exciting. Forget who the players are, but when you see like Liverpool linked with two or three players and they're all with the same agency, you start you start to think then, why this agency? What's going on? You know, and you look to see how they know this agency. Oh, they've done business before. That means before previously, 
the agency might have said, hey, we've also got such and such coming up for availability. It's absolutely imperative that when a, a player is linked with Liverpool, and you think there might be something in it, we're not talking about the bullshit links, right? Or the stupid Twitter ITKs and that. But if you, th if you see something that's worth paying attention to or digging into, like this, for example, because this is a club president making a bold claim here, it's imperative, really, really important to check who the, the agency is to see if there's, if, if there's any like um, association there. And not only that, what I then do is I will try to find out the key players, in, right, I don't want to say players, I don't mean footballers, the key individuals within that agency and find out what their social media uh, channels are. I know it's a bit stalkerish, but sometimes people don't, like if they're on Facebook, they might not know how to have all the privacy settings and things like that. So there'll be times when I will find an agent, find his social media, and he might have checked into somewhere, you know, it, 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 if you get an agent that's maybe visiting Liverpool, say this kid's agent, uh, and he's taking pictures around the city at a certain time, and he's, it might be like, you know, it doesn't say I've, I've come for a romantic weekend with my partner. But they're excited. Oh, me, you know, I'm working today. You know, just little keywords. It's amazing how much stuff you can find on social media uh, when if you know what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? And I'm a little bit experienced with that because I've been around these. I'm not going to tell you how many years I've been here. Check the comment section. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like to see and I like to dig uh, and to see what's going on. Now, he's represented by Carlos uh, later or something sports. Now, I can't imagine there being a single player to do with us on here. Um... Wolves, uh, Norwich. Yeah, just looking at the list of clients for this agency, and I don't see any obvious uh, links to Liverpool, which I didn't expect. Okay. Um. Uh, so, and so this kid uh, is under contract until twenty twenty six. He last signed a contract in January this year, uh, and it says he's uh, he's linked with Nike. Here. He's got a deal with Nike. So, not a great deal to go on there. Oh, well, let's just have a look at his positions here. Main position, defensive midfield. Um, other position, central midfield or attacking midfield. So, quite versatile in the centre of the park, right? Uh, don't want to go through all his Wikipedia blurb. Um, but he's been with that club um, since he was a kid. He's five foot nine. <laughs> he's a giant compared to me then. Hey, if I was six foot two, I wouldn't be as fat, you know. No. Uh, international career, it says here he's had one cap uh, from Brazil, um, which was this year. So there's not a great deal actually on his Wikipedia, but there's obviously something in this. And we have been mentioned with this kid before. I don't think we've made any videos about him before, um, but you know, I've got memory like a sieve. I, I, I know we've spoke about him on the podcast for sure. <laughs> for sure, hey, hey, Rafa, Roth. As Tom Hicks would say, rougher, rougher. Wonder how he's doing, Tom. Should we email him, see how he is? That's a nice cup of coffee now. Okay, so, Liverpool. Uh, what's the headline again? Liverpool, one game away from £34 million transfer wish. We need to come out. Thought they'd come out with some shite. Do you know what? These websites are there. If you look at coptalk.com, Right, which to be honest, I don't update as much now. Cause I don't, I don't know. Do you guys still like to read text articles, or is it all about videos and podcasts? The members' website, we still still do stuff on there. Um, but you know, if you if you visit CopTalk, you know, there's not much advertising on there. And I opened up a link the other day. Um, I think it was on my phone actually. Uh, yeah, it would have been on my phone. And it was, I think it was the Liverpool Echo. And I swear down, I could not browse the website. Because of the amount of advertising. I mean, like, it's just completely and utterly ridiculous. And I just didn't read the article. It's horrendous. Truly, truly horrendous. And I think that the more advertising you have on a website, the more suspicious you should be of its credibility. I really do believe that. Because it shows you what their intentions are. And there's one particular guy that, uh, I, I, you know, that all he does is report about Liverpool. I don't even like using the word report. All he does is post articles about Liverpool on Twitter. And I've seen him on there. Most people probably know who he is. And he's certainly not <laughs> certainly not of interest. But when, when what I do is I like to keep an eye on what everyone says for you guys, right? Uh, and especially the members. 
So I will, so occasionally, if I see his shit come up on, you know, I'll be like, oh, what's this silly thing? You know what I mean? I'll have a look. Uh, and just the amount of advertising is off the grid. And then when an article finishes, and it, page, page six, seven pages of adverts, it's truly uh, amazing. So anyway, that's just a rant by me. Um, when you visit these websites today, they're, they're truly terrible. At least you can go to the BBC or something and not get hammered. Um, I don't know if you can get an ad blocker for a mobile phone, can you? Have you any of you kids got any experience of that? I do use an ad blocker on my desktop, um, but only on, on websites that are ridiculous. I wouldn't block it on a, a fan's blog, for example, because I'd be depriving him of a few pennies, you know? So, uh, anyway, I don't know if you've seen these quotes. I don't know if any of you know much about this player. Um, I think you should monitor this one. I really do. Uh, because we have seen him mentioned before, we've got a club president confirming Liverpool approaching. Now, the only thing is, is it still relevant? You know, things might have changed since Liverpool made that phone call. Liverpool could make that phone call yesterday and today they could have a different agenda altogether. Um, but I, I do suspect Liverpool um, will be continuing to to look at strengthening in those positions, maybe. You know, there's... Um, an article today by our friend James Pierce at The Athletic. Uh, was it? It might have been published yesterday. No, the ninth. Uh, McAllister is a fantastic player for Liverpool, but he's not best as a number six. Um, so there's a, there's a lengthy article there. Uh, and some of you guys were commenting similar about that yesterday. Uh, okay, I'm just looking at the Cop Talk VIP members. There's, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing on there. Uh, well, I say that. Uh, <laughs> who's this player that we, we discussed him the other day, didn't we? Maximilian Beer, Beer or something. I don't know, Maximum Beer is what I'm going to call him. Uh, and uh, there is a discussion about him in the the, uh, the scouting department of the members' website. And one of the members has put that haircut rules him out as a target immediately uh, in capital letters. I love shit. I love people's humour like that. Anyway, okay, that's it. I just wanted to bring to your attention this article. You might have heard these claims that Liverpool, uh, you know, are very interested in this player and one game away from signing him or whatever or breaking a deal, reaching a deal for him. So I just thought I'd mention it to you. I think it's worth mentioning, guys, all right? All right my eyes are a bit red, right? I'm getting messages. Uh, let's have a look. That's my boy Smooth. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, guys. Um, if you uh, appreciate the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment if you've got time, uh, especially if you know anything about this player and what your thoughts are and what, uh, you know, that comment there about McAllister. And uh, do you think Liverpool will do business in January? It's a little bit early to start thinking about that. We're st I was going to say we're still in September, but it's actually October, right? So usually around the third week of November is when you start to see some credible transfer news start to, to come in. Remember that, always remember that, ahead of the December window, around the third week uh, of uh, November. Did I say January? Let me just make sure I said that right. Ahead of the January transfer window, look out for speculation credible around the third week of November. And that's usually because the club have like a, tr a transfer summit in November and so I really get down on to like, you know, what they're going to uh, focus on in, in, in January. Okay, that's it, I think. Uh, if you appreciate the video, please thumbs up, leave a comment, hit the super thanks uh, button. Uh, if you'd like to buy me a coffee, uh, nobody bought me a beer at the weekend. I was very, very, very upset. You had me in tears. Um, and uh, if you'd like to support the channel or become a Cop Talk VIP member, the information is in the video description below. Uh, I'm going to continue drinking my coffee. I'm going to continue watching that Big Brother shite on there, see if there's any fit birds, uh, see if I can learn about people's cultures and things like that. And um, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll be back with you again later today if there's something to talk about, guys, all right? Okay, hope you're okay. I'll speak real soon.